Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Friday's edition of Cleveland Photographic Society's presentation. Tonight, we'll be having Rosen, uh, Coleman Rosenberg uh, presenting Impact, the Often Miss Ingredient. But first, we're going to have Mike Kopkis make a few announcements, and then afterwards, Coleman will follow. Well, again, welcome to our Friday night meeting. Right now, again, the meetings are virtual, uh, and we are taping them for now. At some point in time, we hope to be streaming them so you can see them live on a Friday night. Uh, for visitors, any, anyone out there that is a visitor to the club, has never been there, uh, we welcome you. And normally, if you were here at a live meeting, we'd ask you to stand and introduce yourself and let us know how you found out about the club. We can't do that, obviously, but we invite you to visit our website, clevelandphoto.org, and uh, find out a little bit more about us. And certainly, if you're interested in joining, uh, you can join, uh, contact us through the website. Uh, a few items from our calendar, some upcoming events. Uh, first of all, we regret to say that the July 19th rubber duck uh, baseball night has been canceled. Uh, the next uh, event on our calendar is July 24th. We have a nature and pictorial competition. Uh, the deadline for entry on that has passed, but we certainly invite you to Take a look at the pictures, listen to the judges' comments, and hopefully uh, get some enjoyment and learning out of that. Uh, on July 25th, uh, the Queen's Wright Co Colony, Queen Wright Colonies in Spencer, Ohio, from 10 to noon. Uh, I guess they have beekeeping and birds and bunnies and llamas and all kinds of things. Uh, very popular uh, event from last year. It is free and open to everyone, and we do ask you, though, to wear masks and maintain social distancing as much as possible. Uh, Sunset on the Flats on August 15th. We'll be meeting down at the Flats to take some pictures of the sunset, and Stone Garden Farms on August 22nd. So these, are, these events are free and open to the public, and they are outdoors, so they are uh, relatively safe. So we want, to, want you to at least be aware of that. I do want to call your attention to another thing that we offer, and that is the CPS Photo Challenge. Uh, every two weeks, we introduce a new topic, and we ask you to take pictures for that topic and submit them to the group. Uh, currently, our topic is abstract photography. And uh, the new topic will be introduced starting this Sunday, July 19th. So please take a look at that. That's described very well in, on our website. And uh, we certainly invite you to, to join that particular effort. Uh, tonight, I want to introduce Coleman Rosenberg. Uh, Coleman has been a member on and off since 1975. He is an instructor in the fundamentals class that we offer. He uh, worked for Dodd Camera for about six years. He's also an instructor at Tri-C. Um, he also runs a program we call Masters of Photography, or sometimes referred to as Shoot in the Style of a Famous Photographer. Tonight, Coleman's topic is impact, the often missing ingredient. So Coleman. Thanks, Mike. Uh, it's good to be here tonight. Um, this is uh, impact is a topic I've been thinking about for for quite some uh, some time now. It um, experience with judging both here, some of the B competitions and uh, other clubs. Uh, it occurred to me how important impact is in in looking at good ph photographs. Uh, so this was something I had been thinking of, um, and it just so happens to uh, tie in very closely with Mike Kopkis's goal for the club this year, one of his goals, which is to be able to look more critically at our, our work. So um, this really ties in closely with that. 
I didn't quite expect to be uh, presenting it to sort of an empty room, but uh, <laughs> we've got a few people here, uh, all wearing masks, by the way, other than myself. Um, but, um, but here we go. So uh, I hope this will, will help you uh, evaluate your own work better. Okay, so uh, again, the topic uh, is impact, the often missing, missing ingredient. Um, what, what I plan to talk about tonight is, uh, first of all, how do we evaluate a photograph? What is impact? What are some of the ways we as photographers can make photos with impact? And talk about the fact that impact is an important in any style or genre of photography. So how do we evaluate a photograph? Well, it sort of depends on uh, whether you're evaluating it for yourself or for a friend uh, or just, you know, people's snapshots uh, or whether you're a judge evaluating it for a competition. Um, the average person looks at photographs, and you've probably heard the old stories or maybe had the experience of uh, being invited over to some friend's house to see their uh, vacation slides. And generally speaking, everybody that I've ever talked to that's done that has said, boy, was that a boring experience, uh, going through you know, somebody's several hundred slides of a, of a vacation probably very few of which had much impact to them. Um, I think what most people, the average person, the non-photographer or the casual photographer, looks at a photograph and, and just hopes it's not boring. Uh, Jim Richardson from National Geographic uh, used that term. He just said, "Don't just don't be boring. Uh, so many of us, take boring shots. I take boring shots. Uh, but I, I've learned to separate the boring shots from the shots that I want to either frame or try to sell or put in exhibitions or, or compete with. Um, you know, we all take photos like uh, the two photos here on the screen are both. The one on the left is one of my grandsons playing basketball. Has impact to me because it's my grandson. Uh, but I doubt it has very much impact to anybody else. The right-hand photo is my other grandson playing soccer, and actually you can't even see him in the picture. He's hidden behind two of the other players. Uh, in fact, in that photo, um, you can't see any faces whatsoever. There's a little bit of action there, but it's, it's, it's a boring shot. It doesn't really interest anybody. Um, so that's the kind of thing we want to try to avoid. Oops. Let me go back. There we go. Uh, here's a couple other shots. They're, they're, you know, decent shots. The one on the left is a, a boat. It's a little, one of those little taxis on the Cuyahoga River. It happened to be uh, a working boat. There were a couple, uh, one park employee and couple workers who were surveying the river with a drone. Uh, but if you don't know that, uh, you know, there's really not much that that photo says or uh, doesn't really have much power. The shot on the left, on the right, uh, was the Tall Ship Festival. And many of us went to the Tall Ship Festival. We got some beautiful shots, uh, but this was not one of them. <laughs> this is a shot of a number of tall ships there uh, overlapping one another. And then there's that large boat in the foreground, which is actually maybe of interest to some of our CPS members because that's, that's the holiday. So that boat is carrying CPS members uh, around through the Tall Ship Festival and they're, they're photographing it, but it's not a very good photograph and it's uh, you know really no, no impact there. Here's a photo uh, that I took just last weekend at Menor Headlands Beach. And I took it for a particular purpose. And it was just something I wanted to post online and talk about the 
timely topic of social distancing, which, you know, it shows very well. Manor Headlands is a huge beach, and people had a lot of room around them, and for that purpose, it did, did fine for what I had planned it to be. But, you know, it's a boring snapshot. It doesn't have impact. It's not something I would enter in a competition or anything like that. Action is an area where it's easier to find impact. However, look at these two photos. Uh, I shot these two sail borders different years. The one on the left I shot at Fairport Harbor Beach a couple of years ago. And although it's an action shot, compared to the one on the right, it's a very boring shot. The one on the right shows more action uh, rougher lake, uh, you know, just has more impact than the one on the left. So uh, even though it's an action shot, not all, not all action shots happen to have impact either. When we look at a photograph from a judge's or a juror's perspective, then we have different criteria that we might want to consider or that we do consider. Uh, every competition that I've been involved with, uh, uh, the judges or jurors consider three different criteria, composition, technique, and impact. Um, and generally speaking, give equal amounts of, of importance or scoring points for each of those three criteria. But I've got to say that whenever I've judged, one of those three criteria often, to me, I think at least, has a little more impact, and that is impact. Um, when, a, when a photo comes up on the easel or on the screen and I'm judging it, my first reaction is that wow factor. Does the photo wow me or does it not wow me? Uh, that's, the, that's my first impression of the photo. I then consider technique. Is it in focus? Is, uh, you know, is there selective focus? What's the compo composition look like? Uh, all those other factors, the more technical factors. But impact, I have to say, probably, well, it's definitely the first thing that I notice. And, I, and I'd have to say it probably carries a little more weight in my judging than the other two criteria. Um, so it's that wow factor. Here, here are a couple of photos that are impact alone. Technically, neither of these photos are great, uh, yet they both won Pulitzer Prizes. The photo on the left is a famous photo by Rob, photographer, photojournalist Robert Kappa of the uh, D-Day landing in Normandy. Um, he was landing with the soldiers, and it's out of focus. Uh, it's not necessarily composed properly, but that photo won a Pulitzer Prize, and most people who are old enough to remember it will always remember it for its impact. The photo on the, le on the right, rather, is another Pulitzer Prize-winning photo by Stanley Foreman. Um, it's not as well known, probably, as the one on the, uh, the left, but it, it happened to be a photojournalistic shot of uh, a fire in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, where while the photographer was uh, watching and recording photos of this young woman and child being rescued on a fire escape, the fire escape collapsed and uh, they fell. Uh, the young woman did not survive. The child landed on top of her and did survive. Uh, but it, it was a, a photo that, again, not technically a great photo, but impact-wise, it was uh, uh, won a Pulitzer Prize. So it just goes to show you how important impact can be in a photo. So when we talk about impact, impact is um, something that makes us feel something. 
Ansel Adams said he didn't capture a scene, he captured a feeling in his photographs. <clears throat> Another way of saying impact is that a, a photo has a hook. Um, a hook is something that draws on our emotions, yours or the emotions of others. There's a psychological connection with you and the other viewers. It may even suggest a story to be finished by the viewer. Um, your own emotions are easy in terms of taking a photo that has impact or that has a hook. So I go back to those photos of my grandkids. For me, those photos have a hook. They, ha they draw emotion. Uh, but for others, that's something we really need to think about. And, and not everybody does that. So when, when we're competing, uh, when we're deciding what photos we should enter in a competition, we really need to think about, okay, this photo has impact for me, but will it have impact for others? And that should be a, uh, a really strong factor in our choosing photos to enter into competitions. So here are a couple photos that have that wow factor. Now these are mine and I don't, I'm not doing this to show off my photos tonight because you're gonna see a lot of them. It's almost gonna be like that. Come on over and see 200 of my photos. Uh, but I hope these will have more impact than, than that scenario that I laid out before. But both of these photos, the one on the left of the sun setting over the Lorraine Lighthouse, uh, you know, it has a wow factor. The photo on the right of the young double amputee running down a track, this was something I uh, had the opportunity to shoot uh, for the U.S. Olympic Committee a couple years ago. And it definitely has a wow factor. It's, it's uh, inspiring. People look at it and, and just are awed by that photo. So uh, that's the kind of thing we're talking about tonight, photos that have that wow factor, that kind of get you to say wow and, and feel something. Here are a couple of photos that these work together as a story, and I just shot these last Saturday at Menor Headlands. Uh, Saturday, there were high winds, and the waves at Manor Headlands were as big as I've ever seen them. And this young boy was standing out there sort of challenging Mother Nature. And uh, I thought it, I, I knew what was coming. I had done that many times as a kid myself on the East Coast. Uh, and so I, I really knew what was coming. So I shot in, in burst mode, and the, the image on the... Uh, on the right shows him being slammed by the wave and uh, you know, I was lucky to capture it in such a way that you're able to see the boy and see his reaction. Um, so sometimes you know, it, it could be a series of photos that work together to tell a story. Uh, I, I got a lot of comments on these photos but almost always the comments were on the second photo, the one on the right, which is the one that then has the impact has the wow. Literally impact. <laughs> Literally impact, yeah, he got slammed. So there are different types of hooks, uh, things that can draw on our emotions. Uh, there's the past, the future, love, joy, hope, beauty, adventure, life, and lots of other things. Um, if you've ever spoken to or read about anything from by people who work in media, who make TV shows or movies or commercials. They always talk about a hook. Uh, what is it that's gonna keep people's attention? What is it that's gonna uh, keep them interested in uh, the commercial, the movie, the TV shows? People complain about commercials, but there are a lot of great commercials. And the great commercials are commercials that have good hooks, uh, whether it's flow from Progressive or uh, the Gecko from Geico. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of good hooks out there. Some, some we like, some we don't. Um, but it's all about 
uh, you know, holding your attention, making you feel that wow factor. Uh, and that, again, it's something we need to think about as we're taking our photos. Um, before you even press the shutter button, uh, take a moment to consciously think about, is this photo going to capture people's emotions? Um, so how can we make photos with impact? What are those things we should be thinking about? <clears throat> Excuse me. Capture something that matters. Capture something that's uh, common but maybe goes unnoticed. Uh, colors can capture our, our attention and, and make us go wow. Composition, contrast, presentation, things like selective focus, a story that the photo may tell. Um, so these are all things that we can ask ourselves. Uh, what, what of these things can we do to uh, capture people's attention and, and give the photo that wow factor? Um, I'm going to ho hope to show you some examples now that will include many of these <clears throat> factors that we just talked about. Um, some of them meet all the three criteria, uh, uh, impact technique, um, uh, and uh, composition. Others may be just one of the three or two of the three. Um, and one of the things I've noticed, and I've heard many other pho photographers say, um, don't expect every photo that you take to be a winner, to be that you know, prize-winning photograph. I know that when I go out and shoot, my percentage of photos that I might even look at and work on is relatively small. Uh, I have hard drives full of thousands and thousands of photos that I never look at. I could delete them, but that's a personal preference that I don't, I don't uh, believe in. But I know many photographers do, and I probably should but storage is cheap and I go back to them once in a while and I find some others that I can do something with. Um, but again, very few at first um, pop out to me as having impact and are worth doing something with. Uh, interestingly enough, I found that during the pandemic, I think my percentage of keepers or better photographs has gone up. Um, I've, I've gone out a couple times a week uh, different places where there's plenty of room and I'm not exposed to other people. Uh, and you'll see some of the photos downtown, uh, the beach, uh, a number of other different places, the Cuyahoga River and so on. And I think because of the fact that during the pandemic, I'm not rushed. I can go out, I can take my time, uh, really explore the subjects, the things I'm photographing has helped me to become a much, much better photographer, much more selective photographer in the things that I shoot. And I find myself having a higher percentage of, of keepers or photos that I uh, consider good enough to do, doing something with. I don't know if the rest of you have experienced that or not, but it's, it has been my experience. So let's take a look now at some of the photos I've taken over the years. So this photo on the left is a, I call it a ship portrait. It's a blue nose from the uh, Tall Ship Festival. And unlike the previous photo we saw a few minutes ago of the Tall Ship Festival, there are no distractions in this photo. Um, and what I learned and what I found that uh, you need to do to have this kind of photo, which then has impact is, is wait. Sometimes you have to wait to have a clear photo uh, with, without a lot of distractions in it. If you're lucky, sometimes you can remove distractions from a photo, which I found uh, that I needed to do in some of the Tall Ship Festival photos. 
Uh, but the one we saw earlier would have been pretty much impossible as those boats and ships were all sort of overlapping one another. But this photo, uh, uh, I think, has a lot of impact. In fact, a friend of mine who built a, a new home last summer purchased a copy of this photo to hang over her fireplace. So I was, I was very happy about that. Uh, the photo on the right um, was just something I noticed walking through the Thomas Edison Laboratory uh, up at Greenfield Village near Detroit. Um, his laboratory and workshop was just just full of machinery and and tools and all sorts of things. But um, uh, I took the time to take my time and really see what there was uh, to photograph and, and found this high wheel or, or I found that they're called penny farthings actually, uh, leaning up against a work, workbench and uh, was able to take the photo. One of the interesting things I've, I, I wanna mention here also is sometimes uh, software and apps can help you with these photos when I originally took this photo and downloaded it, the window was blown out. You really couldn't see any detail outside of the window there. But uh, one of the apps that I've learned to use quite a bit uh, at home on my, when I'm processing photos is the Nick software suite and Nick Detail Extractor brought out the outdoor scene, which was almost non-existent when I downloaded it. So it's kind of amazing software. And I'll talk more about uh, editing techniques a little later too, in terms of ways we can improve the impact on a photo. So with, when that window was, was just blown out, I may not have even used this photo or, or done anything with it. But once I was able to see the uh, detail outside, I decided that it was w worth doing something with. Um, so again, it's a matter of taking the time to, to truly see things and see things that will have impact and are worth taking uh, a photograph of. Sometimes uh, it's a matter of seeing things that other people aren't seeing. Uh, the photo on the left here uh, is uh, the bolts on the Center Street Bridge down in the flats. And it's something that we may pass by and never even notice, or we may notice and not think anything of photographing, but uh, it turns out, I think, to make a, a, a photo with quite a bit of impact. You can see the detail there and uh, uh, the diagonals and so on. And of course, the color uh, helps as well. The photo on the right here was uh, shot in Missoula, Montana, where I was for a workshop uh, a few years back. And uh, I mean, this one just screams impact. It, uh, it was an old Studebaker agency and they had the sign painted on the side of the building. It happened to be a nice clear blue sky. And then the, uh, the shadows of, of those lights uh, on the side of the building as well, just kind of, you know, cried out to be photographed. So that one didn't take a lot of thought. It just, <laughs> it yelled out to me, take my picture, take my picture. Okay, here we've got, whoops, let me back up here. A slight delay. Okay, here, um, sometimes uh, parts of a photo uh, may have more impact than the whole photo. The um, image on the left of uh, a classic car, this was at the jazz uh, exhibit at the Cleveland Museum of Art about a year, year and a half ago. And although the whole automobile was interesting and, and had impact, I don't think it has as much impact as a cropped portion of the car. And again, here we've got lines, we've got bright color. Uh, uh, it's just an interesting sort of abstract that, that has a lot of impact. 
the diner on the right um, is another, it sort of ties in with the car culture, uh, I, I think, uh, which is why I grouped it with the uh, photo on the left here. But old diners um, tend to have, um, they have a following, they, they have a nostalgia factor that can be a hook. Uh, we mentioned the past, and so the past, a lot of people like the past. They, they're reminded of, of good times, and um, that nostalgia is, is a pretty strong hook for a lot of people. Uh, while at this diner, I, I, I shot a number of photos in here. I'm sure people wondered what the heck I was doing, because I was even down on the floor shooting it uh, <laughs> down the aisle, uh, looking up at the, the stools at the counter and so on and so forth. But uh, so I had a number of photos that I, I, I did something with, with this, from this diner that uh, I thought had a lot of impact. And one of, the, one of the other photos I took of this diner is hanging in a gallery in Chagrin Falls right now. So. Um, they thought it was good enough, uh, so it must, must have had some impact. Here we have uh, some safe deposit boxes. Um, one of the things that, that uh, is great about Cleveland Photographic Society is, is some of our field trips, or many of our field trips. And these safe deposit boxes were shot, I think it's been about nine or 10 years ago now, at the, um, what was, I think, the Cleveland Trust Bank that is now the Heinen's downtown. We had an opportunity to tour it before it was uh, converted to Heinen's, and we got down in the vaults down in the basement, and uh, I took this photo in one of the vaults that was filled with the uh, safe deposit boxes. And through selective focus, um, I call this photo the lone key um, because there is only one box there with a key in it, and that's also uh, where my selective focus is in, in that, uh, on that one safe deposit box. Uh, this photo also sold just recently. It was in an exhibit at the Artist Archive uh, downtown, and actually I sold two copies of it there. So. Um, uh, I didn't expect that, really, but um, I thought it had impact, but I wasn't sure others would think so, but apparently it did because somebody, one person bought two copies of it. Um, photo on the right, the uh, Cleveland Harbor Lighthouse frozen over. Um, this was supposed to be a once-in-a-century event, and I went down and shot it when it happened, uh, I think it was 2009, and uh, shot it two different days. The first day that it was uh, that it happened, it was still uh, snowing and blowing quite heavily, and the sky was overcast, and uh, it, it it was it produced some photos that really didn't have a lot of impact because they were well, they had impact in terms of the weather, but not so much the lighthouse. So I went back a day or two later after the weather had cleared up and was able to get it on a bright sunny day. And um, <laughs> the interesting thing was uh, a couple years later it happened again and went back and shot it. So we had a once in a century event happen twice within about five years uh, down there. But um, one of the things that also that, that this also reminds me of is the fact that um, sometimes things happen that are not common and as photographers, if we want photos uh, that have a lot of impact, it's uh, good to be able to hop up and go grab these shots when they happen sometimes, if, if that's possible. As a retired person, it's more possible for me now than it would have been a number of years ago. but. Uh, it's, uh, it's something to keep in mind. Right now, we've got a comet happening that a lot of photographers are Neil taking a, advantage of and going out in the evening or at night and, and photographing 
uh, that comet. And that's not going to happen again for, I think, a couple thousand years. So uh, if you want to do it, do it in the next couple of days. Uh, here the photo on the left, uh, something I just happened to see walking around a neighborhood of Cleveland. Uh, this was on somebody's front porch. It was unusual. I thought it was unique and had a lot of impact. And uh, so I grabbed a photograph of it. Again, the photo on the right here from one of our field trips to the Blossom, uh, Blossom Time Balloon Festival in Chagrin Falls a few years ago. Um, and this is a photo, again, which is um, not, a, not a full frame of the balloon, but a portion of the balloon. Um, and this was how I shot it. This was not a crop photo. Um, sort of got up close and, and just por uh, photographed a portion of, of the image. So uh, that's something else to keep in mind. Sometimes either cropping in camera when you take the shot or cropping uh, while processing the photo can improve the, uh, the impact of a photo. Sometimes uh, less is more. So something to keep in mind in terms of uh, creating impact in your photos as well. The Peter B. Lewis building down on uh, Case Western Reserve University. For some reason, this is one of the best kept secrets in Cleveland. Not a lot of people know about it. Uh, the city doesn't promote it, maybe because it's on the campus of Case Western Reserve. But boy, if you want to see a building that can be shot from hundreds of different angles and has a tremendous amount of impact, no matter how you photograph it, it's worth going down and photographing. Uh, and that brings up the fact uh, the point, too, of uh, exploring your subject. Don't just photograph something from one vantage point and walk away. Uh, a lot of things can have many interesting vantage points, and they're worth exploring. Um, another thing that I do quite often is I just go out for a drive uh, in my car, purposely getting lost looking for things to photograph. Um, Geauga County, Ashtabula County, Summit County, uh, Medina County. I've, I've driven all around those areas, Cuyahoga County and Lake County, of course, um, just looking for things, interesting things to photograph. And uh, a lot of people are afraid of getting lost. Today, with our cell phones, we can ask our cell phone how to get home and uh, not have to worry about it. So um, you can find all sorts of, of great subjects to photograph, things with a lot of impact uh, if, you, if you go out and uh, aimlessly look for them, I guess you could say. The photo on the right here was something um, I shot actually at one of our members, Barbara Pennington's house. Uh, she provided the flowers, and a friend of mine provided me with these uh, big uh, gears and, and pieces of machinery. Uh, he loaned them to me for a while. I was shooting them initially by themselves, and then I sort of had this thought of um, combining the hard gears with the soft flowers and doing some, some still lifes. Um, so um, got together with, with Barb at her house, and uh, we, we put together, or I put together these photos. She worked on some other types of things. And uh, this is another photo that I've had requests for uh, because it's unusual and apparently has impact to people. It did to me and apparently does to others as well. Uh, the photo on the left here uh, was one, at one of the Hale Farm Civil War reenactments. And um, here again, it kind of, kind of points out in looking for photos with impact, they're not always where you think they may be. Um, you know, here I was, actually it was raining when I took this photo. 
Um, I was kind of hidden under some trees to help protect my camera and not get too wet, uh, while most people were concentrating on the reenactment it itself. Uh, I looked over and saw a woman walking across the pasture looking at the uh, a Queen Anne's lace flower and got this photograph of her. And uh, it too has been a, a pretty uh, interesting or, or, or a photo that a lot of people have been interested in. Um, so sometimes it means straying away from the crowd, looking at things other than what everybody else is looking for to find the photos uh, with high impact. Uh, that photo also has that nostalgia factor to it. Kind of takes us back to simpler times and uh, gives people a good feeling. The photo on the right here was another one from the Tall Ship Festival. And this was one that I did crop uh, on the computer after I photographed it. I also added the birds. They were not there in the original photo. Um, one of the things uh, with the Tall Ship Festival, uh, I think I've shot it three different times now, and every time the sky was terrible. The sky was just gray, uh, a blah sky, not lending itself to photos that really had much impact. But uh, through, again, Nick Detail Extractor, sometimes I'm able to bring out some of the clouds in the sky, they're there, uh, but they're often overexposed and somehow uh, apps like Nick Detail Extractor tend to bring them out. But this photo I also um, added a texture to and it added a little something to the photo um, and made it uh, something that, uh, uh, this was another photo that I printed a large canvas of and it sold in a gallery in uh, Hudson, Ohio, a couple of years ago. So here, here we have a photo that was cropped. It was birds were added, textures were added. All those things were done uh, to help add impact to the photo and eventually made it, made it a sellable photo. Another thing that we can do to add impact to our photos uh, I, I've really alluded to already is simply look for different perspectives. This is the Marblehead Lighthouse on the left. Um, I've seen a million photos of this lighthouse. Probably 90% of them were walking toward the lighthouse from the parking lot and almost all identical. And I have that photo too. I would never do anything with it because everybody else is taken that photo or seen that photo. Uh, so I walked around, I, I explored the whole area and found this vantage point uh, uh, looking at the lighthouse with the uh, keeper's uh, house fence acting as a leading line up to it. It was a bright sunny day, beautiful sky and all those things kind of put together, I think, give this photo uh, some high, high impact. Um, the little boy on the right, um, that photo screams boyhood to me. You know, he's got mud on his leg, he's holding a stick. I always used to talk about the fact that when you see kids uh, in parks, boys always had sticks. And this is a photo that um, I, I learned another lesson from. Uh, sometimes you have to just sit and wait and let photos come to you, uh, and they can be high-impact photos. So this was shot at the North Chagrin Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks. Uh, I had been walking around shooting near the pond there, and I decided to um, just sit down and see what came my way. And sure enough, this little boy came walking by, and I was able to capture that photo of him. And uh, a lot of people have told me how much they, they like the photo because like me, it just screamed boyhood to them. Here the photo uh, on the left, uh, a photo that um, um, I got just playing. Um, 
this was done not too long ago, a couple months ago in the spring. This is Menor Headlands Lighthouse. If you've ever been out to Menor Headlands Beach, it's a very rocky beach. It's a combination of rocks and sand. Uh, but I thought, uh, well, I had a new camera that had an articulating LCD screen. And it was the first camera I had had with an, uh, an articulating LCD screen, which allowed me to place the camera on the ground and still compose the photo without having to lay on the ground and look through the viewfinder. So um, I, I positioned the camera on the rocks, uh, used a few rocks to kind of tilt the camera up to get this angle, um, set an aperture and focus point to give me selective focus uh, on the rocks further away in the lighthouse, and then went ahead and took the photo. And um, the point that I want to emphasize here is that um, many of us don't utilize all of the features that our cameras uh, provide us with. And I was one that seldom learned more than I had to learn to go out and start taking photos with my, my camera. But now I'm learning that uh, there are a lot, of a lot of features of these cameras that uh, maybe I should learn. And, and by learning how to use, I can add more impact uh, to my photos. And this was an example of using that articulating LCD screen to take a photo that I probably wouldn't have been able to take otherwise. Photo on the right. <laughs> I call this one Eye on the Ball, sort of an obvious title. Um, a lot of people are creeped out by this photo. <laughs> that's the first reaction I get from it. So um, it's Im that's impacted. It, it definitely has impact on people. This was something, uh, it's funny, I, I, I don't often visualize photos uh, that I'm going to uh, make out of composites. I, I, I may visualize a photo, a straight photo, that I want to take somewhere, someplace, or of somebody. But this was one that I had thought about making for quite some time. And, Finally, a couple years ago, I, I uh, went to a golf course and I shot the ball by the hole. And uh, then I went home and took some shots of my eye and then put them together as a composite. Um, so, uh, you know, it was one that I had thought about for a long time uh, and, and finally put together. And, you know, with digital photography, that's something we can do to make shots with, with impact, uh, as well as just taking straight photos with impact. Um, so this one, this one was definitely one that I've been told creeps people out. <laughs> now the photo on the uh, left here is one that breaks a lot of rules. Um, I shot this at the Cleveland Museum of Art. Um, one of the things when I'm teaching I tell students is never have your subject looking out of the picture or moving out of the picture or have them position way over near the edge. But uh, I saw this gentleman sitting there. Um, it just kind of asked me to photograph it in this manner. Uh, Impact-wise, it has some things going for it. Obviously, the bright color of the walls, uh, the gentleman sitting alone there on the bench way over at the edge, and it suggests a story. Um, you can make up your own story about it. To me, uh, it tells a story of a man waiting for his wife or significant other to come out of the ladies' room. Um, but... Um, it, it, so the story gives it impact and the bright colors give it impact. And the gentleman sitting way over there on the left gives it impact. Uh, but it breaks all the rules or many of the rules of photography. The photo on the right, um, I do a lot of black and white, although I don't have a lot of them here in the presentation. But uh, this is a black and white photo. Um, I think I took this in New York City, actually. Um, 
And it's the patterns, the patterns uh, of the fire escapes making that those Z shapes, um, black and white photography. Um, unlike color, you don't have the color to give impact. But one of the things that can impact uh, impact your impact in black and white is contrast. Um, and uh, you have a lot of choices you can make with contrast in black and white. Uh, very high contrast can give you a lot of impact, uh, but you lose some detail, and usually in the shadows, well, possibly shadows and the highlights. Uh, very um, low impact, usually I, I advise against. It tends to me, or tends when there's very low impact or low contrast um, to lose impact to me. So I like, preferably, uh, my preference is actually to try and bring out usually a whole, the whole range of tone, tones, blacks, whites, and grays. I kind of like that. Other times I may go for high, um, high contrast uh, to give me impact, but I seldom, seldom go with low, in, low, low contrast, rather. Low, in, low contrast tends to uh, just uh, look kind of blah to me and lack contrast. Here's another uh, example on the left of events, events that can be, um, uh, provide us with a lot of impact. I went down to downtown Cleveland. This was shot from Public Square on the Monday morning prior to uh, the pandemic shutdown. And as you can see, the city streets are pretty well deserted. This was bef you know, uh, uh, the day before the actual shutdown or stay at home order, but there were already uh, a really Downtown Cleveland looked like a ghost town. And um, uh, so it was a matter of, you know, I, I sort of had a sense that things were pretty quiet downtown um, and that I wouldn't be exposing myself to the coronavirus because there wouldn't be a lot of people. So I went down there and sure enough, um, you know, I, I wound up doing a whole blog post on scenes from downtown Cleveland on that day. And then about a week later, I went over to the west side and shot uh, on the west side of the uh, Detroit Superior Bridge and also around the west side market. A um, whole series of, of these kind of eerily abandoned downtown uh, Cleveland. And uh, once again, you know, got a lot of comments from people um, because of the, the, the sheer abandonment of the city uh, providing impact in these photos. The photo on the uh, right here is another one from the Blossom Time Balloon Festival at Chagrin Falls. Um, we were fortunate enough to be able to go out on the field while they were doing the balloon glow, one of the nights where the balloons don't actually fly, but they light them up uh, as the uh, as it gets dark out. And um, you know, here I was fortunate enough to just notice the this one balloon crew looking up uh, into their uh, hot air balloon while they were inflating it. The the flames from the burner were illuminating their faces, and uh, you know, I I, I got what I think is one of my favorite photos uh, uh, there that night. Um, and an another factor that this photo kind of brings, brings up to me is um, knowing how to use our, our, our cameras. Here, this was a photo, um, this was quite a few years ago, but I, my ISO was 12,800 on, uh, on this particular photo. And um, you know, I had enough confidence in my camera knowing that I could get rid of the digital noise um, and still not worry about uh, 
about it and go ahead and take this photo at such a high ISO. So, um, you know, the more you know how to use your camera, uh, the better off you'll be in terms of uh, being able to take photos with the impact that you're looking for. There we go. These were a couple, whoops, let me go back. Got a little slow computer here. Ah, there we go. There we go. Hopefully it'll stay there. All right. Okay, these are some photos I took last summer at um, Mystic Seaport in Connecticut. This was a place I got back to last summer after being there as a junior in high school and always wanting to get back. So, I don't know, it's been... 50 some years since I've been there, but uh, it's a place I love. Um, it's like Greenfield Village or Hale Farm, except a maritime version of it. And um, you get to be able to tour these, a lot of tall ships, whaling ships and so on. Uh, and I was on the ship, the, um, I think it's called the, uh, I've forgotten now, the Joseph P. Morgan, I believe it is, which is um, the ship that the crew members on the right-hand side here are on. Um, but the photo on the left I took from the deck of, of, of that ship. So these were a couple whaling boats tied up at a dock with the, uh, the little whaling village behind. I did add a little, little teeny bit of... Um, uh, effect to it with uh, a program called uh, Topaz Impressions. And um, again, one of my favorite photos um, uh, these days, uh, and one that a lot of people have, have really liked of the, uh, the two whaling boats there. The photo, going back to the photo on the right, um, while I was touring the ship, they have uh, crew uh, demonstrating different skills on the whaling ship. And these gentlemen were uh, hoisting sails. And rather than photograph them from deck level, I went back up to, uh, I climbed up on, or went up a few steps um, on the gangplank or the, the uh, way of walk getting up onto the ship. And that put me up above them and I was able to to shoot down at them while they were uh, uh, hoisting the sails. And sometimes you're even surprised by some of the things you got. I didn't notice at the time I was taking the shot, but when I got home and looked at it, I found that the one gentleman wearing sunglasses, um, the sails and mast are reflected in his sunglasses, which was kind of a a little bonus that added to the impact of, of that photo. So sometimes luck comes, at, comes into play as well and uh, adds some impact to your photos. Okay, here are a couple of um, flamingos. These are actually two different flamingos at two different zoos. One was taken at Cleveland Zoo, one was taken at the Akron Zoo. Um, you almost can't go wrong impact-wise with shooting uh, flamingos, parrots, a lot of different birds and other types of wildlife at the zoo. Um, <clears throat> the one thing, though, that, that sometimes makes it difficult is getting clear shots where you don't have distracting backgrounds or people in the backgrounds or artificial backgrounds, things like fences and so on. Uh, not that they make a photo terrible, but uh, I'd prefer them not be there. So I'm always looking for angles to take photos with high impact and without a lot of distractions. And these flamingos uh, certainly provided that. Here are a couple... Um, uh, sports photos that 
Um, the one on the left, uh, another example of waiting for the, the moment of impact, or waiting for a moment uh, of higher impact than other moments. Uh, so this kite surfer uh, spent a lot of time zipping across the water, and some of those photos were pretty neat as well. Uh, but then I got these photos where he actually uh, went airborne, and I think those even show, show more impact. Uh, and I had a number of those, so this, this was just one. Um, if you've ever watched small kids t-ball, um, you'll probably think that's one of the most boring things you can ever watch. <laughs> I know I did. One of my grandsons started out playing t-ball. And <laughs> there's the only thing, the only people more bored than I was were the kids who were actually playing. <laughs> they were squatting down in the infield, drawing in the dirt, and uh, you know they're they they weren't interested in the game <laughs> at all. And it was a pretty boring thing to shot ex to shoot, except when my my grandson was you know in the field or up at bat or running the bases or whatever. But I happened to see this shot. And this shot, um, you know, I thought had a lot of impact. It, it, it talks about love. It talks about, um, you know, caring for the, the kids. Uh, it talks about skills of a coach uh, and or a father, uh, whatever the case may be. It just, you know, did have a, have a lot of impact. So, um, my lesson there too was, uh, even though I was bored, you know, be ready, be ready when when a when a shot that does have some impact takes place, and uh, if you're ready, you can catch shots like this. These two photos, um, these are amazing. <laughs> these were shot at another one of our uh, field trips from the club. This was down at the Buck and Ohio Rodeo. Uh, so I think it was the first time we went there some, some years ago. Uh, and if you've never been down to Buck in Ohio, it's, it's quite an experience. I think they do it four, four Saturdays every summer. I don't know whether they're doing it this summer or not, but it, it's a real uh, fun event to go photograph. And um, so I, I, while the event is taking place, it starts out late in the afternoon, and by the time it ends, it's, it's dark out. But um, so these two photos, as you can kind of tell, were taken during the golden hour uh, while the sun was low in the sky and uh, lighting up this cowboy and cowgirl. These were candid shots. Um, I just happened to see both of them uh, sitting, and you know, one reminded me of the Marlboro Man and uh, the cowgirl just look kind of beautiful too. And the interesting thing about these two photos to me that, that again talks about impact is I posted these, I have a blog called Photography Unposed. And I posted these two photos on that blog literally years ago, maybe eight or nine years ago. And if I go to my blog today and look at the statistics on people viewing my blog, different pages, these two photos to this day have drawn more views than any other things I've, I've posted on my blog. Um, people like cowboys and cowgirls, I guess. Uh, I don't know what it is, but apparently, uh, I mean, I think the Two photos have impact, but apparently so do many other people. Um, I mentioned that, uh, well, I didn't mention, I, I, I hate to take portraits. I almost never have taken posed portraits. Um, I do take what turn out to be portraits, as, but I take them candidly. So the photo on the left here was a gentleman at one of the... Um, uh, probably a Civil War reenactment. And here again, it was a matter of waiting, waiting for an expression or waiting for him to turn his head the, uh, in a direction that I could get this 
photo of him. So um, patience is a, is a real virtue in trying to get photos with impact. Again, you can't just walk up to many subjects, whether they be people or other things, and just uh, walk up, snap a photo, and walk away and be done. Sometimes you have to be patient and wait for the moment, wait for the moment that, that where the impact is, is there. The photo on the right here uh, uh, is a photo I took at a high school basketball game. Uh, there was a lull in the action, and I happened to notice the, uh, the referee standing there with the ball, and I framed the shot this way, took it, and uh, I think it has a tremendous amount of impact, even though it's an unusual shot. It's not something that most people would think to photograph, maybe. Here we've got a couple photos that are sort of train related. Uh, the photo on the left, I call this Gritty City. Um, another photo that many people would say, wow, that's really, it's too busy. Uh, and it certainly is a busy photo. There's so much to look at in that photograph. Uh, there's horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonal lines. Cars, wires, a bridge, two bridges, telephone poles. It's really a busy photo. Um, however, um, I kind of liked it. I thought it had impact. I entered it in a couple of uh, uh, exhibits. It was accepted. Um, it hung in, it also hung in the gallery in Chagrin Falls. And much to my amazement, it sold. And it sold to uh, a woman who came in, saw it, and whose father had worked for the Nickel Plate Railroad. Mm. And she bought the photo to give to him as a gift. So, um, I mean, I always liked the photo. I didn't know what other people really thought of, of it other than it had been in, accepted into another exhibit, uh, exhibits. But um, sometimes you never know how impact will um, affect other people as well. And here, here this, this photo meant a great deal to uh, this woman and, and her father. Uh, the photo on the right here, the um, uh, steam engine, I think it's 765, that comes into the Cuyahoga Valley most summers and um, causes quite a bit of excitement amongst photographers who all run out to, uh, to photograph it. And uh, I mean, it's hard to take a photo of this uh, locomotive while it's moving that doesn't have a tremendous amount of impact. I mean, the sheer magnitude of the, the locomotive, the smoke, um, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can almost smell it and hear it in any of the photos you see of it. So uh, it's almost a no-brainer in, in terms of taking photos that, uh, that have impact. Uh, one of the things, though, I, that I did find necessary was to do some planning, to find a place where you can shoot it where other people aren't going to be in the way. Um, to shoot it in a place where, you know, notice in this photo, it's sort of coming around a curve. So it can kind of, you can both see the front of the, the uh, engine as well as some of the cars that it's pulling behind it, coming around the curve uh, toward me. Um, so um, something well, I think well worth photographing, a lot of fun. One year I came upon it by accident, happened to be out at the farm market down on Riverview Road, I guess it is there in the peninsula or down near Hale Farm and uh, was buying corn and heard the whistle blow and right across the street, the engine came by a few minutes later and got some photos of it that time too. Um, here are the photo on the left, another black and white photo. Um, I, one of the places I like to photograph is just wandering around down in the flats, all sorts of uh, views with the different bridges and skyscrapers and 
highways overhead and so on and so forth. So this was a photo. This was shot just a couple months ago. Um, we had a s series of days where the sky was beautiful. Um, the sun was shining, but um, you know, nice blue, blue sky with wispy clouds and uh, just walking around looking for different angles on photographing the city. Somebody told me when they saw this photo, it sort of had a futuristic look to it. And, and I had to kind of agree um, once they had mentioned that it, it, I guess it does sort of have that look. Photo on the right, um, again, sometimes you need to go off the beaten path and you'll find things that are interesting to photograph. Um, I went up to Presque Isle to ride my bike one day and Presque Isle is in Erie, Pennsylvania. And just before you go into the entrance to Presque Isle, on the one side of the road is Waldemere Park, and this photo is of the roller coaster at Waldemere Park. But on the other side of the road that enters Presque Isle is uh, a Pennsylvania, state of Pennsylvania sort of environmental center, the Tom Ridge Environmental Center, I believe it's called. And I usually go in there to go to the bathroom before I go on my bike rides. And they have a tower you can go up on. And so one day I decided to go up in the tower. It was fairly early in the morning, maybe about 10 o'clock. And I went up on the tower and you can go out and walk around the outside of the tower and uh, found that I could see the top of this roller coaster as it came up above the trees. And they happened to be testing it before they actually opened up. So. I grabbed a bunch of photos of, of the roller coaster, and this one happened to be uh, the roller coaster, the empty roller coaster as it reached the top of the peak there, um, which made it somewhat of an, an unusual photograph and got Lake Erie uh, in the background. And uh, again, just a, an unusual photo that I think has impact. Uh, and uh, I would not have known about had I not just been kind of wandering around uh, looking for things to photograph. I'm a sucker for seagulls. I've never seen a seagull that I haven't tried to photograph. Um, here are a couple that I, the one on the, uh, the left here was one I photographed at Manor Headlands last Saturday. Uh, actually, both of these were from last Saturday at Menor Headlands Beach. Uh, but I have tons and tons of photos of seagulls. Um, I think they're beautiful. Um, you get all kinds of skies behind them. The, they're not easy to photograph, so I, I consider it um, part of the impact. The fact that uh, I'm able to get them sharp uh, focusing on the eye, and the eyes are always sharp. If you can get nice detail in the feathers, that adds, uh, adds to the impact. Um, but, uh, you know, it takes some skill to do it. It took me a long time to be able to, um, to get these photos. They're hard. You have to work fast. Hopefully, I mean, they're even hard to get your camera to focus on because they come up towards you and they're flying fast. You're trying to get them in your viewfinder and hope your uh, autofocus will uh, kind of grab onto them and focus. So it's, uh, it's definitely uh, not an easy thing to do, but you feel a great sense of, of uh, accomplishment when you do. And um, I think they have a lot of impact. They're, they're kind of beautiful. I've taken a lot of these and, and printed, used text to print uh, parts of poems or song uh, lyrics on that kind of go along with the photos. So uh, a, another type of photo that I like to take. I'm fortunate to be amongst a small group of photographers uh, from CPS here who have been invited over the years to photograph the local ballet company, the Verb Ballet. And um, 
if ever there is a category of photos that I have a lot of uh, photos with, with a lot of impact uh, that, I, that I can claim, it's photos from shooting verb ballet. Uh, we get to shoot their dress rehearsals. Uh, and I, I really consider it a privilege to be amongst the few that are, uh, were invited to do this. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of hard work. Um, typically, I'll come away from a two, two hour rehearsal with between two and 3,000 photos. Uh, and as I said earlier, you know, most of them are not keepers. If I can come up with 20 to 40 or 50 that I can send to the ballet for them to use in their promotional materials, I'll consider that a really good day. Um, they, they, you know, if you get the right ones, they have a tremendous amount of impact. Um, things like leaps, which you see in the photo, uh, on the right here, this was a, a version of <clears throat> the Nutcracker that they did at Lorraine Community College a couple of years ago. Uh, the photo on the, le on the right, um, uh, a photo shot at, I believe it was Cleveland Public Theater. Uh, <clears throat> a couple things that, that really add to, uh, well, one of the things that adds to the impact uh, during the ballet is the lighting. You can see in the photo on the uh, left, or on the right rather, again, that uh, lighting played a, a large part in the impact of, of that photo. Um, other moments, like the leaps, uh, are hard to anticipate. Unless you've seen the ballet before, the particular performance or you're familiar with a particular ballet. And I, I had no previous knowledge of ballet prior to shooting these rehearsals, but now I absolutely love it. Uh, but one of the things that I've, I've found out is that listening to the music while I'm shooting can, can tell me when a moment of impact is coming. The music kind of builds to a crescendo every time they're about to, to, to take some dramatic leap. So I, I, I found that the music can help me anticipate moments of impact while photographing the ballet. And then again, the lighting can add to that impact. Here are a couple of other uh, photos from, from different rehearsals. Uh, the one just a moment. Uh, of uh, a ballet that depicted someone dying of AIDS, uh, a very emotional photo. And then the photo on the right, uh, two, two dancers leaping simultaneously, uh, a tremendous amount of impact there. And probably my favorite of all of my ballet photos is, is this one. Um, Many, many of the ballets uh, are shot in a dark theater. The back wall is dark uh, behind, uh, at the back of the stage. Uh, the lighting lights the, the dancers. And uh, of course, this photo <coughs> had a number of things going for it in terms of impact. Uh, the lighting, the dark costumes against the dark background, and then, of course, that, that big dash or splash of red on the cloak uh, of the one, one female dancer in the center. Um, uh, the, again, this is, this is probably my favorite uh, of all of my ballet photos and one that really, I think, has a lot of impact. So as I uh, wrap up here, uh, a number of additional tips that I've uh, maybe mentioned, but want to reemphasize is, again, um, be patient. Wait for the proper moment. Don't always be in a hurry to take a photo and, and walk away. Sometimes um, the photo hasn't taken 
taken place yet. The moment hasn't taken place yet where the photo has uh, the impact that, that you really don't want to miss. Look, look for and shoot from interesting angles. Uh, those of you who have taken the uh, sports photography class uh, that I that is included that I give it's included with the fundamentals class. Um, <clears throat> I talk about a photo of a 5K race uh, that I shot while sitting. I shot the start of the race sitting in the street, shooting the race at knee level rather than standing up, shooting at eye level. And it gives the, gives the photo a very different, uh, a different look and adds impact to it, looking up uh, at the runners rather than looking directly at them as they uh, are running down the street. As I said earlier, explore your subjects. Look at it from different angles, different perspectives, um, different sides. One of the things that I often see um, that I think is, um, can be improved on. I see a lot of, of photographers shooting buildings straight on, uh, barns, uh, houses, uh, and whatnot. And I think um, shooting them straight on to me makes them boring. But if you take a couple steps to the side and shoot them at, a, at an angle, I think that simple taking a few steps can add impact to a a subject, an architectural type of subject. Uh, and then lastly, and I think most photographers after they've been photographers for a while, learn to see, not just to look, but to see, see things that um, most other people don't see. We all kind of take for granted. I've, um, I've done a series of photos of uh, one of the things we all pass by all the time, standpipes, the fire connections on the sides of buildings. We all see them, we pass them every day when we're in the city, uh, but we seldom really notice them. And on a trip to New York some years ago, I noticed they're all different types of them. Some are painted, some are brass, some are uh, sort of, uh, I guess, copper, um, and, and they all look different. They have different designs and so on. So uh, I started shooting standpipes, and I have a whole collection of standpipe photos, something that most people pass by and never think to photograph. Um, turn around, look behind you uh, when you're out photographing. Sometimes uh, your, your mind is on what's in front of you, but sometimes the impactful photographs can be behind you as well. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about impact, just know that impact applies to every different style or genre of photographs. Um, you know, in the ones that I just showed you, I think we might have hit on pretty much all of these categories. But, um, you know, look for impact no matter what type of photographs you're taking landscapes, portraits, street photography, sports and action, nature, architectural, just about anything else. A month or so ago, I was watching a webinar and um, I heard one of the speakers talk about this other photographer, Ted Forbes, and his a book that he has written called The Art of uh, Photography. And one of his quotes um, uh, kind of grabbed me. He said, the world needs work that matters. So in order to capture works that matter, I think we need to um, think about impact, think about images that evoke emotion, that exude mystery, that tell a story, um, that inspire people. Um, those are the kinds of impacts or uh, photos that we remember. Um, John Lowengard, the photo, uh, who was a photo or picture editor at Life magazine during the 1970s and 1980s, said, "Always shoot what can't help what you can't help but shoot." Um, 
you know, the photos that grab you. Those are the things you, you want to photograph. Um, I came upon another quote just um, today, actually, that didn't make it into the presentation. But Ann Geddes, who is a famous um, a baby photographer, she photographs infants, newborns. She's from Australia. And I found this quote um, of her. She said, I think that emotional content is an image's most important element, regardless of the photographic technique. Much of the work I see these days lacks the emotional impact to draw a reaction from viewers or remain in their hearts. And I thought that that really summed up what I was trying to say here tonight. Um, so as you, as you go out and take your photographs, um, take a moment to think about that statement. Take a moment before you press the shutter to think about um, how can you add impact to your photos. Uh, think about what we've talked about while shooting. Think about it while you're processing your photographs. Think about it while showing your photographs. Um, Think about the photos that have stuck with you over the years. Uh, I grew up in the age of Life magazine. Uh, I used to look forward to coming home as a, as a grade schooler once a week and, and thumbing through my father's uh, Life magazine. Uh, and many of the photos that I saw back in those days have stuck with me. And the ones that have stuck with me are the ones that had a lot of impact. So uh, as you go out and, and take your photographs, whether they're for personal reasons or for uh, competitions or exhibits or whatever, uh, don't forget about impact. It really, I think it's the most important thing, uh, the most important of the criteria in terms of having photographs that mean something to you, mean something to other people, and will stick with other people. Uh, so with that, I want to say thank you. I uh, hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, stay safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> Don't touch your face. <laughs> and uh, wear a mask. Thank you. Thank you, Coleman. I, I, there was a lot of good information there, and I know it's gotten my creative juices going, and, and I can't uh, wait to go back out and start shooting again. Uh, I had a question for you, though. Sure. When you, uh, do you find you have a better success rate when you plan an event or when you just go out, let's say, freestyle? Or, it, or is there, do you find a difference between the two? Um, that's a great question, Chuck. Um, I, I guess it's, it's some of both. Sometimes, uh, especially during these last couple of months or during the pandemic, when I've gone out, I've gone out more purposefully. Uh, I've, I've sat home and thought about where can I go to shoot photos that I think will be impactful. One that I can think of in particular recently was, um, you know, I live near Fairport Harbor and, and Manor Headlands, and there's a lot of boat yards around there. And I went, mm, yeah. uh, purposely went to a boat yard and just shot pieces of boats. <laughs> and it was something I, you know, I, I thought about before I went, uh, just trying to think of somewhere I could shoot something interesting. So that was sort of a, uh, an event or a time when I, you know, thought about it beforehand. But other times, you know, I've, I've like I said, driving around and just coming upon things uh, right. works as well. That's neat. So. Well, again, thank you, Coleman. That was very informative. And uh, I would like to say thanks for uh, everybody that's been watching. If you'd like to view this presentation again, you can visit the CPS YouTube channel. Uh, the link is available on the CPS homepage or simply visit YouTube and search for Cleave Photographic. Please send us your feedback at info at clevelandphoto.org. And again, thanks for watching. And we hope this has given you some pointers in, in how you can be more creative with your photography. And especially in this day and time, uh, 
it's a good uh, it's a a good hobby to have because you can go out and and do some shooting and and still practice your social distancing. So keep shooting and stay safe. Thank you again. Hello.